Marty, I want to talk about this other story that we discussed at the weekend. Mm. Um, and and largely story. because it's an urban tale and it could have happened quite literally to anyone. It mm -hmm. happened to you. And I yep. know that you were pretty emotional when we had a conversation about it on Sunday. So I'm going to interview you. I want you to try and stick to the facts, man, because I know sure, you were mate. really upset when I talked on Sunday. So Sunday, yep. you and a friend of yours are out shopping at what? An Indian food mart or something? No, a Asian supermarket um, up on Dominion Road. Uh, got some um, bok choy and some carrots and stuff like that. And we were wandering uh, just back home, which is along uh, New North Road. So this is 11 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Now, you know, if you've lived around certain parts of Auckland, especially Ponsonby, where I live in Kingston, um, you, you also get this in Dixon Street, Courtney Place. You know those mental patients who basically yell at themselves all day? You know, they walk at those ones that have conversations with themselves and arguments all day. You walk past them in the street yeah. and they go, I don't, I don't. They're, They're never yelling at each other, right? Okay, that's yeah. right. Well, this, this guy, and I'm going to say, you know, who he was and what nationality, because it's important because of uh, the fact that he had his mother in the car. So he's an Indian guy who would have been in his 50s, and I'm not... Um, and just a really mild-mannered looking dude. In the back seat was his, his mother, who's about 80. So we're just walking along the road. He, just, he drives past us, and we walk across the, um, the, the railway crossing. He stops and starts winding his window down and starts yelling, Don't you be talking about my wife! Don't you be talking about my family! Just this crazy sh shit like that, mate. And then he starts taking photos with his camera. We just ignore him, and I just thought, oh, God, just... Because you know, when you live in this area, you just think, oh, this is just another one of these... Look, honestly, there were three weeks ago we had a guy with a and knife in the gym next door. It wasn't because you were no, Marty no Devlin, it was just... There's no interaction or anything, mate, okay? I had sunglasses yeah. on and a baseball cap, mate. And so you know how we had the mental guy with the knife about three weeks ago outside work here, run into the gym? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, well, that's well, this right. Yeah. This guy is obviously out of a padded cell somewhere, and that's where he should be put back. And anyway, so he drives past us, he's got his window down, he's yelling. So it didn't even, th didn't even think anything of it, because he, he didn't look physically intimidating, plus also... Uh, he's just nutting off to himself, you know. Anyway, so yeah. we're still walking along along the footpath now on New North Road, and he's driven up the road, he's done a U-turn, he's come screaming back, and then he just drives straight up onto the footpath, parks his car in front of us, gets out, starts yelling again. Now, I'm with a middle-aged woman here, right? So there's just the two of us. And he starts yelling again. Careful, Don't be talking careful. about my family. Don't be talking about my family. And then, mm. again, just said nothing, walked past the car, we're about probably 30 or 40 yards up the road. I hear the engine revving. The guy's on the footpath on his car, right? I hear the engine revving. I turn around. I'm not joking. He's floored it. And he's just coming straight at us. And you get this surreal Driving kind of feeling. Driving straight at you. Straight at you. Tr trying to run us And over. the middle-aged woman so, that you're with. Yeah. And so you're trying to, you're sitting there and you're standing there and you're kind of thinking, is this actually real? Is this real? And then at the last moment, the car is, I tell you, if with an automatic car, if you've got 40 yards, you floor it and see how fast you're going by the time it's coming at you, right? This thing is going like, coming like a bullet. I jump, I feel the bumper on my leg. I full dive onto the footpath to get out of the way. Almost like it's so close to hitting her, I thought he'd actually hit her. And then he, he just speeds off down the road. So we, we've got it. I'm lying there. I look up and get his number plate. Three witnesses come running across the road. One of these, one of the women is completely shocked. She thought she's seeing a dead body. She thought it was, she was watching an attempted murder and somebody had just died. So anyway... We ring the police. Now, rather than me do it, because, you know, here am I, I'm a white man, you know, and I'm just thinking, okay, I've got a profile and everything else. They, you know, if I, if I file a complaint, what are they going to do? You know, and so I'm not, I'm, I thought, best that she does it. She, this is a, a middle-aged woman who's just turned 50, who's from, you know, out of town, and, and she will file the complaint. Well, rang the police, 111. Gave them the guy's number plate, gave them the witnesses, all the cell phones and everything. No car turns up, nothing. Haven't heard a single word the rest of that day, not a word from the police at all. Ring up the next morning on the Sunday, uh, wait 20 minutes online on hold, um, and then get told, oh, um, no, we didn't do anything about it. And I said, you know, she's saying, well, look, for God's sake, this guy tried to run us over in a car. He's mentally ill, obviously. Um, you know, this is a, a really serious incident. Oh, come in and fill out a form. So, well, how, how, the hell, how long is that going to bloody take? Okay, it could take two hours. So I rang a really senior police friend of mine, and I won't say who it is, but a really senior person, and he just said, and I quote, Auckland police are an absolute shambles. Don't go in there and fill out a, a form. It's going to be two hours of your life that you'll just waste. Go online and do it. So she goes online and does it, fills it all out again, all the witnesses, my cell phone number, everyone's cell phone number, waiting, still no call. Last night... Still no call. This is now 36 hours later after a guy tries to run us over. Remember, he's on the footpath, Sean, okay? He's on the footpath. 
He tries to run, to run you down in his car on, on the, the footpath, footpath unprovoked. On the footpath. Still nothing from the police at all. Get an email finally back from them yesterday afternoon about, I don't know, three o'clock or something, which says, um, uh, here's a lost and found form you can fill out if you've lost any property. Still no call, and it was filed under a traffic incident. Now, obviously, somebody hasn't even read the complaint to file it under a traffic incident, but this is now two days later after somebody in a car tries to run two people at random down on a suburban inner city Auckland street at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning. And one of the, we're both middle-aged, but this is... And nothing from the police at all. Honestly, mate, if, if, I, if I was a vape shop and I'd been ram-raided, there would have been a helicopter there and four police cars, right? Uh, I'm, I'm just staggered and stunned by this, that there has been no response at all from the police. They have the guy's licence plate number. So it is as easy as going around to his house, putting some cuffs on him, taking him back to the place where he can bark at parked cars and make vape bean necklaces and be perfectly safe, because that's where he should be. He should be in a mental home. This guy's an, This guy is obviously troppo. Well, well, I don't well, know if he's uh, off we, his we medication. Can't pre, we, can't, we can't prejudge that. Oh, but sure what I'm I saying can. is that you sure randomly... I've spent enough time around mental people. I've been in a padded cell myself, remember, last year. I know what people yeah. are like who are bing-bong bonkers. And this guy was. And his mother in the back seat was about 80. And so she was um, babbling away to him um, in, in a language I didn't understand. But obviously I thought that she was keeping him calm. The crazy thing was is that... Because he was such a nutcase, you, you don't really feel like physically threatened or anything. It was only when he was driving towards us. But I would have thought that after something like that, that A, a car might have turned up or B, even a phone call might have been made to say, hey, we've gone around and we've actually, you know, I don't know how much you can actually, you know, give here apart from the registration of the, or the license plate of the car. And, um, and, and, and hopefully something gets done about that. But for, you know, you just, I, I don't know, you know, what, what did he need to hit us? Do I need to be in hospital with my legs broken, do I, before they'd actually turn up or actually even even phone? You know, and I don't know what the lesson here is, people. I really don't. I'm still freaked out about it. But what are we meant to do? Are we meant to take the law into our own hands? This guy could be driving around where I work, Sean. He today, could be driving around here yeah, at St. Luke's right. today. If I see this guy in the car, I know his number plate. What am I meant to do? Jump out of the way on the footpath again? Am I meant to pick up something and immobilise him in his car? Because the police are obviously not going to be there, are they? And, you know, I, I say this to my sons in Auckland. If anything happens to you at night, you're on your own. There are no police in Auckland. There just aren't. However, I did see four cars lining up, um, booking um, traffic tickets on, you know, <laughs> the Norwestern yeah. Motorway And don't you morning. worry, RV Yemeni. They're working hard, the police, to keep anyone they don't like politically out of the country too. Well, look, I don't want to slap... So you can, I don't want to slap... No, 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 let me make this clear. I, look, I really I applaud the police and I love the police and I love what they do and, and everything else. I'm just really disappointed that, that, that this is an absolute gimme. This is a really dangerous person who's obviously lost his lolly, lost his lollies, is in la-la land, and he needs for his protection and ours and probably his mother. Otherwise, Sean, what we're going to see is in three or four weeks, you're going to have a story in the paper saying that you know, someone's died. Guy cuts, yeah, someone's been guy cuts over and mum's heads here. off, and she's or she, she's lying in there with no head, and it's in the fridge yeah. or something, and he's sitting there on the, in in the bloody lounge because he's a schizo, mate. Okay, so yeah. please, if you're listening out there, the police, you've got the complaint, you've got the guy's number plate. Please go and do something about this, because otherwise, the next thing we're going to read is it's going to be he's going to run, mate. The guy's on the friggin' footpath. Oh, I, I think you should just <laughs> ring Dane Coles. He'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's you know, I, I, I do make and you know, I do make jokes and lie about it, but unfortunately, you know, no, here, no, the, the, no. The, look, you, the when person you rang me on Sean Sunday, is absolutely you were freaked one, out about it. You yeah, know? no, you she's, were she's you really were freaked out about it. Yeah, yeah. You were, were shaken, and I could tell how seriously. Look, it if that was somebody you that, if that was, Sunday. if that was a man, if that was a man that knew the woman, that's an attempted murder, yeah. is what it is, is it not? Okay, just because the guy's in Bing yeah. Bong Land, I mean, okay, as I say, I don't want him arrested for GBH. I just want him taken off the damn street. That's all. All right, well, yeah. well, keep us posted, Marty, with that, and right. I'm looking forward uh, to Justin Marshall in particular on your show uh, this afternoon. That is uh, Martin Devlin, our um, our drive host, um, our right-wing drive host, because we're all right-wing Nazis here on the platform, aren't we?